what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest MIUI Ori version this is the CN V4 but it also includes the G apps it, you need to do a little bit of tweak to actually get the Play Store I'll show you that but this is the version 14.0.1 and based on Android 12 the build date here is the 27th May 2023 build you can see all the features and stuff right here but talking about flashing I just flashed it like a normal ROM I booted into the Orange Fox recovery, I wiped cache Talvik system data and just flashed the ROM with DFE and that worked perfectly fine. If you don't know what I am talking about, you can watch the flashing guide for any ROM from the description. The MIUI home screens definitely look pretty similar but here you will have amazing amount of customization. Even in the widget section you will see there are all the MIUI 14 kind of widgets and stuff. You can even search for the categories and stuff and it has all the new animations. Just notice the scrolling animation, how smooth it looks. So yeah, definitely you will get these like multiple amount of widgets. Even in the settings panel, let me show you the more settings. You will have huge, huge amount of customization. But even the animation speed and stuff, I will recommend it to changing it to fast. That's how you will get the best experience, I guess. And we have this visible all animation if you don't like animations and stuff. And in the gestures, of course, I have been using with the full screen gestures. There is the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen to actually lock the device. And we have this new unlock animation and stuff. We have these layout. You can actually change this to five by six or something. If you need that, we have the don't show text. And even the Google search bar style, you can change it to these many options. Just notice how many options are there. There is also the global search option and a huge lot more amount of customization. And even we have this folder blur, then the small folder blur, double XL kind of folders. There is the recent panel customization as well. We have the arrange items in recents. So yes, the iOS style actually is working from the recents panel, but you have to actually change it to the like iOS style. Let me show you from the settings of the launcher settings. In the reasons you have to select this iOS style, not only enable this iOS style. So yeah, you can go with the vertical layout and stuff, but we also have amazing amount of options. So definitely this iOS style animation on the recents panel looks beautiful. We have the clear all button. We have the RAM usage status right here. And if you tap and hold on one, you will see the app locking option, the split screen option, then the floating window and even the app info or app settings option is right there. So yes, this ROM definitely looks so beautiful and even here in the quick setting panel, just notice how beautiful it looks. It has the smart devices and stuff right here. You can control your smart home lights and stuff if you want. Even there is the playback option. If you are playing back something with your like media players, it will show up right here and you can just swipe and you can actually edit and add multiple toggles if you want. The brightness editor and stuff, all these animations with this is very smooth, no issues. Everything is working perfectly. And even here, just expanding the Wi-Fi and stuff and Bluetooth and stuff, it's working perfectly fine. And to the left of the home screen, we have the app vault looking like this. You can edit and add even more widgets like I added the battery widget and stuff. You can add it or like turn on the battery saver and stuff. And just notice the battery icon, it looks like this. It looks like iOS pretty much, I have to say. And definitely, at least in MIUI, I have to say this is one of the best looking battery icon that I have seen. Almost forgot to mention about the power menu and yes, this is how it looks like. Of course, you can directly reboot to the recovery or you could just reboot normally or you can put it to silent or just switch to the airplane mode if you want. So fast boot and recovery mode or advanced reboot you have right out of the box here. That's awesome. Let me show you the about section. This is how it looks like. We have the MIUI version right here. If you just tap here, it doesn't do anything. It just shows MIUI OD version 14.0.1. The device name and the storage is right there. We have this check available benefits. It will open the website or something. No, it doesn't open anything. It just force closes for some time. And we have this detailed info and specs. In here, we have the Android version as Android 12. The security patch, it seems like of February, not really sure. And we have the hardware version mentioned, not really sure what that does. But yeah, this is how it looks. Okay, so these are the stock apps which were present right out of the box. And you will see there is no Play Store at all or no Google services or something like that. So for that, I had to go into the account settings in the settings panel, then go into the basic Google services. Then from there, I had to actually enable this toggle. Afterwards, once I actually enabled this toggle, the Play Store and stuff did show up afterwards and I could like sign in and I could install the apps from Play Store. But let me tell you one thing that if you're planning on restoring your Google Ad Data Backup and stuff, those things will not be possible over here because you can just log into your Play Store or your Google account with the Play Store and afterwards you have to download everything 
fresh over here and you just restore your Google App Data Backup. That may not be possible over here. Let's talk about the camera. Of course, it has the MIUI camera right out of the box and it is very stable, no problems. There is the ultra wide angle lens working perfectly. Let me just take a quick picture and yeah, it takes it fine and it's very fast on taking the pictures and stuff. Let me show you, no problems whatsoever. The picture quality is great. And even if I go into the detail section, this is a 12 megapixel photo and the size is about 4.33 MB and the quality is good enough. No problems. Even in the portrait mode, there is a beautification and stuff. And even with the front camera, yep, it looks like it's working perfectly fine. No issues. And even in the video section, we have up to 4K 60 FPS shooting option. And there is the subtitle mode and stuff, all these new features. Even in the pro mode, there is only photo shooting option. There is no video shooting option in the pro mode. You have to keep that in mind. That option you will get in the ROMs like Evolution X. And the MIUI camera is rock solid, no problems whatsoever. Now the good thing is that you do get the Google Photos unlimited backup just like a Pixel device over here. So as you can see, it shows this Pixel can backup unlimited photos and videos at no extra charge. And this is present right out of the box. Now let's talk about the settings. Again, this is the account and sync settings where you have to enable the Google services and stuff. But there is also the screen time then the wallet section. Wallet is not really useful in India because this device does not have NFC, the hardware actually. And in the additional settings, you will have the newer kind of features. Let me show you one by one. We have this gesture shortcut, which is present in any MIUI. Of course, there is the turn on torch and stuff. And there is the Mi Pay and stuff that will not work in India. But we, of course, have this take a screenshot and you can actually go into it and edit it however you want to just from here, like a pen and stuff. You can just draw whatever you want and you can share it. You can delete it from right here or you can just send it to someone or you can save it to your gallery. So all these features are there. Next one is this ignore accidental touch on the edges. So this is really cool. You can actually remember it and I think it does work. We have it set to default, but there is also the big area, small area. You can customize it however you want. Also, the quick ball option is there and you can customize it once you enable it. Let me show you. There is a one handed mode as well and you can enable it and it should work. Let me try. Yeah, right now it's working fine. And we have this clear speaker option as well, just like a custom ROM. And we also have the screen recorder customization or the settings of the screen recorder and the frame rate and stuff you can customize or click, I'll set it to 60 FPS. And even the sound source, you can have it on both microphone and system. So I'll just choose it on both. Even the front camera assistant is there. So this is cool. Earlier, we used to only get this beautify for video calls in the Chinese ROMs. But right now in the MIUI C and we have this fill light brightness. And even there is the front camera assistant and stuff if you need that. And we have this tab plus. Okay, so as you can see, this is how it works. I, ha I am tapping and holding on it. It shows object and right now I can click on it. As you can see, it has these kind of options. You can like copy the text or something like that. You can extract it or do things like these. So this is great. The tab plus should be working fine. And here you can actually copy the text, I guess. Let me open the text. And as you can see, it shows the text, even though it's not perfect, but yeah, it has this clipboard kind of. We have this floating windows as well. There is the sidebar app flashcard and stuff. And we have this generate flashcards automatically. So all these newer features are there. We also have this kit space, but I'm not really sure how it will work. There is a light mode as well. You will be familiar with it if you have used MIUI earlier. We have this video toolbox and right now you can actually enable the video toolbox all the time. So I just enable that. And as you can see, the video toolbox is right there and I can access to any app from right here. Let me go back. We have this quick replies as well. You can enable it for multiple apps if you want. We have the front camera effects and there is a sound effect. Even there is the lift to open front camera, visual effect and stuff. You can customize the sound effects. Also, there is a multiple user mode. The battery info option is there. Not really sure if you can see the battery charging cycle because it shows battery level 100, 100% health or something. This is how it looks. We also have this battery level, which shows the charging status. That's 94 right now. It doesn't show the charging cycle exactly, but I think it shows the battery health right here, which is at 100% I feel because I have a new battery here. I'll talk about the battery stuff later, the battery life and stuff. And we have the opening links option. So you can set particular apps to open links, I guess. We have a new anti-fraud protection, so you can enable it for calls and stuff. I don't have a SIM card here. That's why I didn't enable it. We have this automated task and you can add or like edit any task. You can just automate it with like your location or something like that. So in the additional settings, you will get multiple new option. Let's talk about one more thing. Yes, it does have the latest MIUI dialer. And with that, you will get the call recording option and stuff. 
and the auto call recording or always call recording option is there if you want to enable that you can also there is the me messaging app if you want that this is gonna be handy for a lot of people because it like categorizes the sms's and stuff very well so yeah miui messaging app miui dialer everything is present by default even with the miui gallery and stuff no problems with those now let's talk about one more thing the always on display yes you can actually change the always on display and add always on display from theme section and this is how it will look let me show you with this one so yeah as you can see this is animated and i have actually tried it and this looks cool but before i show you that let me show you this is how the super wallpaper looks and if I unlock it, yeah, the animation definitely looks so dope. And if I apply it, just apply straight away. Let me try to double tap. And yep, as you can see in the always on display, it is animating and this is how it looks. This is so cool that you can actually enable or download any like always on display from the UI theme section. And you can just enable that from right here. So this is what I like about the always on display, but there is also this light up effect. And we also have this race to wake if you need that double tap to wake screen and there is also the lock screen clock format and these are the options we get pretty similar to how we get in MIUI. We have this display charging animation after device is unlocked, launch camera, pocket mode etc options. In the display settings we have the light mode, the dark mode, you can schedule the dark mode as well. We have the brightness level, extra dim, anti flicker mode is also there, you can enable it if you want. Let me go back, we have the reading mode as well, you can enable it from here. We have the color scheme, you can actually change it to vivid color and stuff. And we have the reduce animation option if you need that. Now in the sound and vibration, this is really interesting. We have multiple things like the media call ring etc volume controls. By the way, the volume panel actually looks like this. And you can actually expand the volume panel over here. It looks so dope, this like frosted glass kind of effect looks so beautiful here. And let me show you with the like normal volume panel settings. Here we have the sound assistant settings. We can actually adjust media sound in multiple apps, multiple audio sources and allow speaker option is there. We also have the silent mode, silence media in silent mode of course. And we have the do not disturb additional settings are there and you can disable multiple things. Let me go back. We have the vibrate for calls, vibrant in silent mode, haptic feedback. And there is also the profile video calling and we have the sound effects. There is the Harman Kardon audio with that the sound quality with the headphone jack and Bluetooth as well was amazing. And even there is the preset option you can set it to smart music video and voice. There is also the visual effects but I don't know how that works. Also the hi-fi audio and stuff is there. But yes the headphone effects you can only enable if you like plug in a 3.5mm headphone. So that's how it is. But let me show you how it looks like while playing music. Let me just reduce the volume. And here in the lock screen this is how it looks you can actually expand the like volume or output device and of course you can increase or decrease the volume from right here so yeah this is very cool just notice the animations look so dope you can also do it from the quick setting panel let me show you from here if i play this and i can do this from right here i'm obviously using the app lock but there is also the secure mode i'm not really sure how it works but yes, you can enable it if you want for more security. We have the dual apps, the permissions, the manage home screen shortcuts and the normal manage apps option. Now let's talk about the battery life. Well, in here, I would say yes, the battery life is good enough. As you can see, I'm getting about eight hours of screen on time. This is estimated number guys with the Aku battery app with my kind of usage. But yeah, I am getting about eight hours plus of estimated screen on time here. And the screen off, you can see about six days. So that's about a week of standby time. And even the combined use is more than four days. So that's a really good amount of battery life. But yeah, you have to remember I did change the battery and I have a almost brand new battery here, even though it shows battery health at 90%. But yeah, I think this is more than that, what I actually have. So yeah, in custom ROMs, I do get about 95% plus of like battery health. So yeah, my with my battery health overall in this ROM, I'm getting good battery life. And even the fast charging here is working perfectly fine. No need to worry about fast charging on this ROM. Let me show you the face unlock and for that I have to just double tap to wake and from here I just swipe up and as you can see the face unlock is really fast. No problems. Let me try one more time. So face unlock is working fine and even the app lock let me show you. This is how the UI looks once you are using the app lock. It shows you or it asks you to actually use the fingerprint and if I do that takes a little bit of time but yes it does unlock the app perfectly fine so app lock fingerprint and the face unlock everything is working perfectly fine 
no issues whatsoever with locking and unlocking of the device. In case if you are wondering about the safety net, yes, it passes the safety net test so you can use banking apps without any problems. And the DRM info here stays as L1 so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p if you want. I would say yes, this is a really great ROM but there are some of the issues which I have faced. Let me talk about it. Yes, it is running at 60 FPS or 60 Hertz. So if you're switching from a really fast refresh rate ROM, you will feel a little bit sluggish experience in MIUI because it is running at 60 Hertz all the time. Even though the animations and stuff are very optimized, just notice how smooth it looks while I open the apps. And yes, everything is just like flying through the UI. But of course, the 60 Hertz, it's noticeable if you're switching from a ROM, which runs at 90 FPS, of course. I would say the overall experience and stuff of switching between apps is good enough here and the RAM management as well is very good no problems that I have faced here but the issue is this some of the apps I have seen I cannot really enable them to actually install a particular app let me show you if I go into install unknown apps if I just select this allow and right now if I click on ok it shows allowing as you can see it shows insert sim card and try again I don't know why it does that, like why I have to insert a SIM card to actually install an app through a particular app. I don't get it. But yeah, this is how it is. This is how Xiaomi's security is right now. I cannot daily drive this ROM with these kind of things. But yes, I think with a SIM card it would work. But this is how it is. This is a problem in my opinion. Except for that, the benchmarks here you can see from the screen, the Android and Geekbench score of the device with the MIUI C and version 4. If you like MIUI, you will get amazing amount of features here if you are someone who likes to use MIUI. But if you are someone who likes to use custom ROM, then again, this is not a ROM for you. You will literally struggle to actually daily drive on this ROM because of these issues where you cannot really install a particular app or you cannot really restore your backup from your Google app data. Except for that, this is a good ROM for someone who is used to with MIUI. That's how I feel. Let in the comments what you guys think. This is Tito from KD Index signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Until next time, please hit the thumbs up button if you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KD Index signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.